I was a carpenter and that's what I was doing when I moved out to California and had no idea at that point of being a guitar builder, but I wanted to be kind of a furniture maker. The plan didn't last very long. We got to California and realized how much money it would cost to have a cabinet shop. After I think probably about six months, I was hired in to Northrop Aeroscience Laboratory. Oh my goodness, this is a trip down memory lane. There's, there's Northrop in the wind tunnel so many years ago. The lifeblood of Northrop was high-tech military hardware. All of it began in the wind tunnel. We were taking the sketches and the ideas of these brilliant designers. We had to make things that were had never been made before that were really complicated. As fate would have it, I was getting Fine Woodworking magazine. There was an article in there of, of a guy that built a steel string guitar. So I'm reading this article and I'm thinking, Oh my gosh, this, oh, oh, this looks, I gotta do this. It was like being inebriated in my shop. I mean, I just couldn't wait to get home from Northrop and then head down to the garage. This is an early shot of me, and that's me carving a neck. That was, uh, that was way back in the day. That was in the garage. I was in my mom and dad's garage where I started my guitar career. If I can conceive of it, there's a way to make it. That is probably the biggest thing that I took away from the wind tunnel. Anybody that comes in the shop and sees me working, I mean, I'm still tinkering. I'm still looking at ideas. I'm still trying things. I think the challenge with the 30th anniversary was, on the one hand, you want it to be representative of how we've evolved over the 30 years, but you want it to be kind of special, too. My goal was to build the best guitar that was being made. Doesn't mean I think I did it, but I built this exactly how I wanted it to be. I invite people to be a part of that.